April 1997, the National Skills Development Strategy decided to challenge the skills shortage in the country. So they came up with an effective plan to drive this dream. This big, big dream. And remember, we're a nation of dreamers. They set up CETAs, non-profit organizations fueled by a crackling energy and charged with the responsibility of rectifying the skills gaps in their sectors. They were to develop skills and accelerate the advancement of the disadvantaged. Had the CETAs done this? In fact, what had these sector education and training authorities achieved? My assignment? To rekindle my faith in this country and to discover the signs of change and growth. To measure where we were yesterday. To see where we will be tomorrow as a people. I was reading a history book when I rediscovered the haunting story of the Tosa prophetess who lived in the late 19th century. It was a time of uncertainty and chaos and a fearful nation were looking to Inyangas and prophets for guidance. When a young misguided girl looked deep into a murky pool, she saw a terrible vision that almost destroyed the nation. Hundred years later, a new vision has been born, close to the pools of the terrible prophecy. But this time, it is the Sita's vision of hope and prosperity. And hours to journey to this very place near the infamous Kaha River, where a determined and talented woman is weaving, sewing, and painting the fabric of her dreams into the lives of many. I was on my way to meet Nobenzeni Malusi, so I spent the late afternoon drifting through the mysterious Eastern Cape rolling hills. I love this land home of Nungawuse and the giant lightning bird. A place so drenched in myth and culture, but sadly, the poorest province in the country. I found Nobenzeni, a 39-year-old woman and mother of two, in her tiny village called Koloha by Sea. Soon after meeting her, I realized that to understand Nobi, I had to understand her history the history of the Tosa people. Can you tell me a bit about the history of Koloha? Tosa is in Mbali, it is in Mbali. Egu Tibani ni kwe Kaha River, ne Kweba. Kula pono ngao se wa e tete kona. No ngao se was looking there on the river. And that time was the cow who was eating grass there. So Nongaose was showing the people on the river that there the cow are gonna be the people that they're going to have more cows after they killed the cow the 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 the, the, the cattle. Nongaose believed that by destroying their most precious cattle and crops. Their warrior ancestors would help her people drive the white settlers from their land. The people obeyed her instructions, but no ancestors appeared. And as a result, 25,000 people were believed to have starved to death. And the village of Koloha is still trying to overcome the legacy of famine and poverty inherited from this tragedy in the late 19th century. My mom. She was got five when she was divorced. She was divorced. She was on divorce. 
and those all those five children was died. So that guy she was says, "You better go home because we don't have children." She came home. When she's here, she was got someone to love, and I was the first person who was born at that time. It was 1966, 22 July. I'm here now. So those are when I'm thinking about that. Those are the days. After that, my mom was, even now, my mom, she's sick because now she's got asthma. That afternoon, Nobi took me to a secret place where a dark river cut through a golden gorge and waterfalls cascaded into the pools. She wanted me to dive off a rock. See, this was a traditional display of bravery for the youths in the area. I couldn't do it mainly because I'm wrecked by my terrible fear of water and drowning. I splashed around the shallows and I looked up at the rock and saw that, funny enough, it wasn't that high. I realized how our fears cripple us. Nobenzeni, like me, was once haunted by many crippling doubts and worries. She was too scared to look beyond her immediate horizons. That was until a friend told her about the establishment of a learnership. Little did Nobenzeni know, that Create SA was going to harness her talent and her life was about to be transformed. This learnership I started last year, um, April, was, um, was uh, NUF level four. I learned how to market my business and I learned how to keep the records and I also we, we have the product development. So now you are starting to get creative with the yes. products now that you are... Even now we are, do now mm -hmm. we are doing um, fabric painting. So John Anthony is the trainer in the learnership. Uh, just go with Kiss. Keep, keep it simple. Okay. <laughs> um, John Anthony, he's always told people. <laughs> he was talking about Kiss. The, on the first time, I didn't know what does Kiss mean. But it was explained that kiss means keep it simple. On a serious things, he said, no, man, don't make your mind like, um, like spaghetti. The leadership can change your life like you can learn more about development, you can learn more. You can learn more about marketing. You can have the money, the little money you can have. It it can change your life. That evening, Nobenzeni unexpectedly challenged me to a game of snooker. She liked the colors of the balls, the bright greens and the reds, which she could scatter across the table. This was the new Nobi splashing brilliant colors across the country. Courageous, confident, and bold, her life had just become an extraordinary adventure. Now I know everything is gonna happen. I don't have car, but I know I'm going to have car. You know? I don't have money now, but I know I'm going to have money and I'm going to be a millionaire. I know that. So, in my dreams, I can say, this area, I can build the, the churches, the halls, the poor people, I can employ the poor people, I can do everything for Koloka, just for Koloka. Before I left, I stopped in a hut where a young Kosa initiate was going through the rite of passage to manhood. The young man got me thinking about transformation and change, and how we all tremble with uncertainty on the edge of life before taking that leap into a new future. If you ask something to God, God will answer, will answer you. And the God now is not the old God, it's the new God, the God we've got now. Because if you ask something today, tomorrow is going to answer you. 
There were now answers and optimism in the village of Koloha. I said goodbye to Nobenzeni and felt a twinge of sadness as I watched her disappear. I went down to the sea for one last time. I gazed at the waves receding into the ocean like a painful history rolling into memory and forgetfulness. It was time to leave this beautiful land of mystery, prophecy and vision. And as I drove, I heard the echo of voices singing songs of hope, abundance and joy as one brave woman was striding out towards her future. The past now seemed so far behind.